Is the Cheaper Home Batteries program about to hit the wall? Today I want to talk about something bubbling under the surface in Canberra that could become a major problem for the federal budget and the entire solar and battery industry. Presented by Your Energy Answers. So this video has one purpose to discuss the sustainability of this battery rebate. We really want it to continue as an industry. And for that reason, we want to inform the industry and customers of what's actually going on. So we're hearing out of many corners whispers that the government may be considering cuts, caps or reviews of that battery program. If that happens suddenly, households and solar businesses could be left stranded. So this isn't about being outraged. It's about explaining where the rebate trajectories went off the rails and how we fix it so it can last through to 2030. So let's look at the original government media releases. It said on July 1st, we will have 1 million new batteries through the battery rebate till 2030, and there'll be a $2.3 billion budget. And if you do the simple math, you get 1 million batteries, 2.3 billion, that's a rebate of about $2,300 per household. And at the time, that made sense. A Tesla Powerwall cost around 13,500. It was 13.5 kilowatts of power, $1,000 per kilowatt hour, and 30% of that off wasn't too generous, but it kind of, you know, would make sense. But nobody accounted for the market response. Instead of that $2,300 norm, we are seeing distortions where households installing massive 50 kilowatt hour systems, even if they don't need it. And they're drawing up to $18,000 from the fund. So that average rebate of households all over is not 2,300, it's 9,000. And with that, we won't get 1 million batteries. We'll get around 250,000 before that 2.3 billion is finito. So this rebate was meant to run for five years. And if you divide 2.3, a kind of logical burn rate is around 500 million in the first year. That's what was budgeted. But because the claims are becoming in so high, 2000 installs a week now, the entire 2.3 billion is on track to be spent in the first 12 months. That leaves a 1.8 billion black hole in the government's predictions. And the government financially is already under pressure. The public service wages are up 10%, mining royalties are coming down, unemployment is going up a bit. So when the Treasury and the Environment Ministers sit down to argue about that unexpected 1.8 billion blowout, I predict the Treasury wins every time. And right now, I hear there are many discussions going on behind closed doors. The original reason for this rebate was actually quite good. Avoid blackouts, build storage to support the grid. But I have a saying, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Because the rebate rewards a bigger system size, installers are incentivized to sell the biggest possible battery to maximize their profit. And this has created a gold rush. We are seeing marketing offers of $4,000 for a system with a value of $22,000, $18,000 rebate and $4,000 out of pocket. That's unheard of. It's like you're going to an EV car place and they got a $22,000 car sitting there and the guy goes, oh, I can have it for four because the government giving you $18,000 support. Very distorting. Now the rush to get batteries installed has also distorted the industry in another way. We're seeing installers who once earned standard wages now in such high demand that labor costs have absolutely skyrocketed. I've seen an ad for $250,000 for a battery installer. Warehouses are full with batteries arriving in 10 containers at a time. But my concern is quality. We're hearing reports of batteries installed in non-compliant spots just to get the job done. And there's consumer warning. If a solar retailer who imported batteries directly goes broke in the future, the customer could be left with unsupported hardware, no spare parts, no warranty because a lot of solar retailers are now going to China, bring the container in themselves. And after that, 
See you later. Then we want to also talk about the design failures currently of some of these batteries. So households that only need about 20 kilowatt hours overnight for a battery, they're being sold at 50 kilowatt hour. And then because the rebate pays out more, often the inverter on those systems, because it's a cheaper one, it's only got a five kilowatt capacity. So that means it takes 10 hours to get these 50 kilowatt hours of battery out of this inverter. It's like you're going to a big tank and go there with a straw and trying to get it out of it. It's inefficient and it wastes taxpayers' money. Now the fix, make it a cap of 20 or 30 kilowatt hour for the rebate. That would stop too much money going out and stop that kind of waste immediately. Now, one key goal of the rebate was to get batteries into virtual power plants to stop blackouts. But the uptake of VPPs is actually relatively weak, much less than expected, because people don't trust solar retailers to control their batteries. So the government is paying top dollars for grid support, but isn't getting the full benefits. My suggestion, we need a two-tier system. You get the full rebate if you help the grid, and you get only 50% of the rebate if you don't. Simple. Now, there's really a risk of a crash landing for this industry. If the government pulls the plug suddenly, the industry faces a severe crash landing. Thousands of jobs created during this boom, they just vanish as quick as they came. And here's another bugbear of mine. We started an industry, but we haven't thought about battery recycling, which is very non-existent here. So if instead we've given 2.2 billion only and had 100 million that could have gone to establishing a recycling infrastructure for batteries, that would at least solve one of the problem with those cheap batteries. They're gonna be dead bricks in years to come. And maybe why not putting 20% Australian content into batteries that getting a rebate not right now because it's not possible, but in a year or two years time, that's one of the conditions. Establish your own industry. You're spending 2.3 billion directly exported to China. Why are we not thinking about ourselves? We should be building an Australian battery industry. Now the industry needs certainty now. Installers, they order stock four months in advance. You can't just suddenly stop something and change it suddenly. This whole rebate has taken off pretty well like a Concorde, fast and expensive. But the question is, how the heck do we land this plane? We need to know, will there be a top up for 2026? Will the rebate extend to 2030 as originally planned? Will rebates be capped? Will quality inspections be increased? Now at this point in time, who really benefits? The people who buy quality batteries and the bigger systems, and then get the $18,000 full rebate, not the cheap crappy systems that get the 18,000, but the one with the large roofs, they have the capital to install massive solar rays. And these are often the households that are already better off. So this rebate was meant also to help support struggling families with the electricity relief. But in many cases, it is the wealthiest that benefit most from those large 50 kilowatt systems. Why does this rebate not have an income limit of maybe 250,000 per household. Millionaires, they don't need a battery rebate. But now, let's be real. Energy companies should have invested in large scale storage to support the solar boom years ago. But now it's the government that is relying on households to fix a 15 year failure of planning. How we fix it? So here is a constructive proposal to fix this before it's too late. Cap the rebate at 20 to 30 kilowatt hours, which is enough for most homes. Tier the rebate, full rebate for VPP, reduced if you don't want it. Strict quality inspection on pretty well most systems. And if you have one or two bad strikes as an installer, you're out. So my request is create a glide path, I call it. Don't shut the rebate down overnight. Please give it clarity for the future. So the battery rebate is burning through cash faster than intended, fact. But the solution isn't to end the rebate, it is to fix it. Because families still face those brutal electricity bills, 37% increase in New South Wales this year, and Australia still needs grid storage. So I really hope someone in the government is listening. 
please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and check out all our other videos. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators and find your quality local installers. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.